much for, for the introduction and th thank you um, for the invitation because when Yana invited me a few months ago, I thought it was a really great topic because well, technical tackling technical challenges is really what we do in our everyday life. So it's good to, to have the opportunity to, to talk about it. So I will talk about coupled non atmosphere data attribution for operational numerical weather prediction and reanalysis. And I would like to acknowledge my co author so Phil Brown, David Ferdinand, Pete Weston, who are directly working um, on, on this topic with me, but also many other colleagues because it involves uh, many people across different teams at ECMWF. So um, we are moving towards an earth system approach at ECMWF and um, in our integrated forecasting system, the IFS, we account for different components that you see illustrated here, atmosphere, land, wave, ocean, sea ice, and we use a different data transmission system for each of these components. It's all right, but uh, nevertheless, we are working on improving this, the consistency between the different components and in particular, improving the consistency of the coupling approach, the coupling approach that we use between land atmosphere and ocean atmosphere or sea ice atmosphere. Um, an important aspect of our work is to make it possible to have some modularity, some flexibility to account for different components in the coupled destination system to switch on or off uh, the coupling between each of these components. And this involves uh, a lot of uh, infrastructure developments. And coupled dissemination is all about exchanging information between the data estimation systems within the process of data estimation, which means that they need to share common infrastructure for land, atmosphere, ocean, sea ice, wave. And it, the approach that we use needs also needs to be consistent for NWP and reanalysis. So currently we use a weekly coupled land atmosphere um, approach. So I circle it in red because we focus on land atmosphere today. Um, weekly coupled because we use a coupled uh, first guess model, which is shown here. Do you see my pointer? Yes, we can see. Okay, good, thanks. So we use a coupled uh, land atmosphere model and we are running data estimation separately for the different components. And the output of the data estimation provides the initial conditions for the next um, estimation window, for, for the first guess for the next estimation window. So this is a, a weak coupling, but we have plans to, to develop land atmosphere coupling at the outer loop level of the atmospheric for the bar. So we are looking at different approaches in terms of coupling methodology. So if we, when we talk about coupled assimilation, so there are different aspects to, to, to look at after. So methodology, infrastructure, observing system and monitoring and observation operators. So I tried to summarize here. So methodology, I mentioned before, uh, we are looking at different approaches, weak from weak to strong, to strongly couple the assimilation system. And this relates to the ongoing developments for unified framework uh, like OOPS at ECMWF. So our coupled assimilation methodologies uh, development uh, will occur in the OOPS system in the near future. In terms of infrastructure, using an earth system approach, as I said before, it requires to, to use consistent um, a consistent system, consistent file system, and also a consistent suite definition. Because when we are running NWP or Renesis experiments, uh, we we have to define a suite definition, and all these need to be consistent for for land and atmosphere. And it also requires to develop and and to main, maintain um, consistent research offline and coupled and operational coupled tools. Because for operational aspects, we are using coupled. Um, model and couple uh, data assimilation. For research, we have offline approaches and also coupled approaches. So it means that we have different systems and the maintenance could quite be, can be quite uh, challenging from the technical aspect. And then observing system and monitoring. 
couple definition for NWP requires to have a real time and operational access to observations. Uh, when we talk about coupling, we need to have common acquisition systems for land and for the atmosphere, and same for the ocean. And um, also consistent observation pre-processing, quality control, data selection, which is a form of blacklisting, and uh, feedback files, monitoring, auto alert systems. So everything needs to be consistent for the different health system components. And finally, concerning the observation operators, we want to do a better usage of the observations which are sensitive to more than one earth system component. For example, if you take the low frequency micro observations, they are sensitive to the lowest level of the atmosphere and to the land surface. Snow surfaces, for example, um, are very important for, for this. So couple assimilation um, means that we have the opportunity, but uh, we need to, to go over the technical challenges to um, develop coupling through the observation operators. So for this, we also want to explore um, AI and machine learning approaches. So now to illustrate, so in my talk, I'm sorry, I go back to this one, I will illustrate some of these points. I cannot talk about everything, but just to illustrate some of these aspects. So this one illustrates uh, the real-time access to observation uh, challenges. So this shows the in-situ observations that we had in real time on the GPS, the Global Telecommunication System, on the 15th of January 2015. So one date, it gives a good idea of what we have every day, in fact. And for different, we, on the GPS, we have three types of uh, in-situ snow depth reports. We have the sign-up uh, traditional as numeric, this is the old format, and sign-up buffer, which is a current new format. And we also have additional buffer so institutional depth reports in blue. So whatever the color, you see the coverage of the observations that, that we have daily for, for snow. And, and you see some gaps in some areas. Not because they don't have, um, not, it's not because there is no sort of real-time observation available. It's because these observations are not shared uh, on the GTS. And uh, six years later, so at the beginning of this year, this is a status, so we can see areas with huge improvement, like in China and South America. Um, uh, there are ongoing improvement potentially for the future in the US, as NOAA is, is working on, on the buffer conversion to make the uh, thousands of in situ snow depth observations on the GPS from the US. But all these improvements, you know, uh, required a, a lot of um, a work from uh, from WMO in particular, and uh, in collaboration with WMO, we developed a, a new buffer template so that the WMO member state can more easily report their in situ snow depths on the GPS because access to observations means that uh, member states they need to share their observations and to have the, the tool and infrastructure to share their observations. So WMO play, uh, played a, a very important role in this. And this scatter plot just shows the number of zero snow depths per day reported. So the number of distinct stations reporting zero snow depths. Um, on the what and on the x-axis it is the total number of uh, snow reports per day. And for different years, for the months of March 2015 to 2020, 2015 in black, so you see from 2015 to 2020, which is in um, um, uh, violet here, uh, a steady increase in the number of snow depths uh, reports on the GPS. And also an increase in the number of zero snow depths. Um, March 2018 here, it looks like there is not that much zero snow depths reports. It's because the snow cover was larger than usual. With an important issue, so the reason for this scatter plot is that it's not only having access to real-time observation in terms of snow, we also need to have access to zero snow depth observations because we noticed um, a bias with many stations reporting snow depths only when there is snow. So we communicated a lot uh, with WMO and member states to improve snow depths uh, real-time access, but also zero snow depths real-time access. So there is a Wigos newsletter article on this last year. So now if we, when we're talk, talking about soil moisture data simulation, so this is a schematic illustration of how it works at ECMWF. Uh, we use a simplified extended Canon filter, um, which is shown in the middle here. 
And at the bottom, you see the observations. We use in situ to meta temperature and relativity, which provide a proxy for soil moisture, and with an a priori two dimensional optimal interpolation. And we use ASCAT and source soil moisture and for source, we use a, a neural network uh, retrieval approach. Uh, so this SEKF, um, the output provides the initial condition to the coupled uh, uh, neural atmosphere forecast. We also use our ensemble data simulation to compute the, 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 the Jacobians of the SEKF. And finally, the coupled forecast provides a background information for, for uh, two meter temperature, relativity, and so moisture. So this is nice on, on the paper, but it involves a, a lot of uh, challenges. And this was a coupled system, and I mentioned before, we also use um, a, a series of uh, uncoupled uh, data simulation system. Uh, we have three different approaches. And the top one, in fact, it is offline model forced by atmospheric reanalysis. It doesn't have any land data simulation. This is the one used for ERA land, ERA 5 land. Uh, the advantage is that it allows to run at higher resolution and it is very cheap in computing time. We have a second version of the offline system where we do have a soil moisture data simulation system described in the paper by Nemesio Rodriguez in 2019. And um, so it is as per the previous offline system. So it's offline model, offline data simulation. Um, the, one of the inconvenient is that uh, it needs, it requires a priori observation pre-processing and, and grading. And there is no snow data simulation. So a priori observation processing means that it is a different setup than what we have in operations for NWP in the coupled system. And the third one at the bottom is shown illustrated on the right. We use a, a coupled, um, tra coupled trajectories, a coupled land atmosphere trajectories, but offline data simulation. So we run the land data simulation, but we read the atmospheric data simulation from another experiment, era five in this representation. So it's between uh, offline and, and coupled system. So the advantage is that, in fact, we use exactly the same system than for um, reanalysis or NWP with the same observation interface. And um, it doesn't requ require any additional maintenance of the offline system because it is based on the same system than NWP, except that we bypass the atmospheric data simulation and we read it from outside instead. So what I want to highlight in this slide, and this, uh, sorry, the third one is described in the paper by David Coburn here. So what I want to highlight here is that we have coupled system and we have different degrees of uh, offline and between offline and coupled systems. And what is very important to us is to, to work on systems which are easily, um, well, for which the maintenance is easily achievable. So we want systems that we can maintain and which are consistent with each other. So another aspect is related to observation monitoring. So this shows a uh, smooth uh, brightness temperature monitoring. And this is on the plot at the bottom, they show the standard elevation of the background departure for smooth. Uh, it is in uh, September 2020 last year. You see uh, when the standard elevation values are very large, like in China here on the left, uh, it's related to interferences um, sources. And in China, there was a huge source of RFI in summer last year. And on the right, we improved the screening of the RFI sources. So you see less uh, red pattern here. So I just want to mention here the importance of the, um, well, the quality flags that we use for uh, processing the observations and also the importance of the quality controls that we do in our system. Two minutes, Patricia. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. So now I want to mention what happens when we want to introduce new observations in our system. So this shows smart monitoring was implemented by Pete Weston. Uh, it became operational in May, uh, a month ago, in the 11th of May uh, this year. And bringing new observations means uh, a chain of technical developments. They set up uh, NRT acquisition, uh, script and Fortran changes, and new observation interface for this uh, new observation. And 
uh, suite definition and prep ISS, which is what we use to prepare our experiments and monitoring web page updates and everything. So the next step is map data simulation. So the message here is that a full chain of technical developments is required to integrate new observations in a complex system. And um, this, uh, we are also working on um, looking at, well, a multi layer snow model will be implemented in one of the upcoming uh, new versions uh, in 2022, developed by uh, Gabriele Ardini. And we wanted to look at the impact of the multi layer uh, model on the forward brightness temperature modeling. And this um, plot at the bottom, if you focus on the left, left one at 10 gigahertz, you see that the single layer standard deviation is larger than with the multi layer. And the most improvement is related to the multi layer snowpack model rather than the multi layer um, microwave model. So the message here is that we need to adapt to model cycle changes. When the model improves, we need to follow with the data estimation developments. So it is challenging, but it is also an opportunity to take advantage of improving the, um, uh, the, the system to better use uh, observations. And finally, we use a neural network for small data simulation. Uh, we do the training of the neural network. You see at the bottom the improvement on the aircraft humidity, uh, the fit to observations for different pressure level. This is a decrease of the first gas departure of the uh, standard deviation of the first gas departure when we use SMOS. So it is beneficial to our system. We did the training a priori. Uh, we need really to focus on online training possibilities. And we also want to further explore machine learning and AI for forward modeling. And this is my summary, and I will not comment. It is just what I, I thought, talking about technical challenges, what do we have in mind, and it is all this. Thank you for your attention.